Hello there, welcome to Heart Firm Soft. My name is Alexi, and on this channel I work on various projects related to DIY, electronics, 3D printing and programming. In this video we're going to take a look at how to upgrade your Ender 3 3D printer to direct drive extruder without any ready-made mounting hardware. I'm using the original Creality mainboard for this and there's no need to update your printer's firmware for this upgrade to work. We're going to use this mount designed by Thingiverse user madow 3 d all due credit to them for creating this design. This particular design is great because you don't lose any build volume on your printer by doing this upgrade. I also like that the extruder mount is separate from the hot end and fan mounts, so you're not just restricted to the stock setup. This means that you don't have to customize the design and reprint it just to add a auto bad level sensor or change your fan ducts for example. Now why would you want to do this to your printer? There are a few different reasons for this. One, you can print flexible filaments with fewer issues. Two, you can improve printing quality if you're having issues with blobbing when doing retractions. Three, it can reduce stringing. I've also had problems with the extruder losing steps with some filaments that seem to have higher friction. I'm hoping that that problem will also go away. This upgrade reduces play in the extrusion system and makes the amount of filament coming out of the nozzle more responsive to what the extruder motor is doing. Before doing any modifications to the printer, I printed a 3D Benchy so we can compare the printing quality objectively. For this upgrade, in addition to our printer, printed parts and basic assembly tools, we're going to need something to extend the extruder motor wiring. The cleaner solution, in my opinion, is to solder in some extension wires. For this, you'll need a soldering iron, solder, wire, some cutters and heat shrink. It's easier to strip the wires with a wire stripper, but you can also do that with some side cutters or a knife. If you don't have the required equipment to extend the wires, you can also order an extension cable from AliExpress, for example. The important thing is to have six pin connectors on both ends, one female and one male. And I would suggest at least 30 centimeters or 12 inches for the minimum length. It was a bit harder to find these than I expected, so I'll leave some links in the description. I originally printed this with the directions given on the Thingiverse page. In this orientation, it took about six hours to print. Later, I saw a Filament Friday video where Chuck suggests that you print it on this diagonal surface. In that case, you wouldn't need supports, which will make the print quite a bit faster. I printed this in PLA, and although PLA isn't the most heat resistant material, I don't think the motor surface will get that hot for it to matter. If you have a ready-made cable extension, you can just plug that in and be done with the wires. If you want to extend the existing wiring, here's how to do it. Before cutting anything, take a photo of the wiring so you know which wires to solder together. Separate the wires a bit in the ribbon cable. Cut the wires near the connector while still leaving some room to strip the wires on the connector end. Strip wires in both cut ends of the cable. At this point I decided to disconnect the cables from the printer to make it a bit easier to work. Cut four equal lengths of wire for the extension. I made them 45 centimeters long or 18 inches. With that length, the X axis cables can route nicely with the extruder and hot end cables. Then we can strip both ends of the extension wires. Be careful not to cut the strands of the wires. Cut 8 pieces of heat shrink. Put 2 pieces of heat shrink on each wire and move them away from the solder joints. I made a mistake here by using heat shrink too small of a diameter to go over the solder joints. Solder the eight connections of the extension wires. 
This is one of the hardest parts of the upgrade if you're not that used to soldering. I'm certainly no expert and I managed to get this done without major issues. Optionally, we can use a multimeter to verify that we have good connections on all joints. 0 0.4 ohms is fine here. Move the pieces of heat shrink in place and heat them carefully. Now we have our wiring sorted out and we can move on to mounting the printed bracket. The instructions on the Thingiverse page weren't the most detailed in some parts. Hopefully this video will help you do this a bit faster because some of the assembly steps need to be done in a very specific order. Let's get to it. First, we're going to remove the horizontal support beam from the top of the printer. We need to undo these four screws. Slide the x-axis beam up and separate it from the printer. Detach both ends of the x-axis belt from the hot end carriage. Unscrew the bolts from the two top rollers. Remove the rollers and separate the carriage from the x-axis. Insert the two metal bushings that were between the rollers and the carriage plate in the printed part. You might need to first ream the holes with an 8mm or 5 16 inch drill bit. Here I noticed that you cannot add the bracket to the carriage if the hot end is still there. First, we need to remove the hot end cover. Then we remove the hot end from the plate. Now we can take out the bolts. The brackets can then fit on the plate. It is a tight fit, but it should snap into place with a bit of force. Not a lot of play here even without the bolts. Now we're ready to put the bolts back in. Then put the rollers back on. Put the nuts back on the bolts and tighten them. Next, we reattach the hot end to the plates with these two small screws. Put the hot end cover back on. This is a good time to adjust the eccentric nut on the bottom roller to make sure the hot end carriage isn't wobbling on the V slots. Next, we start to disassemble the extruder by removing the screws that hold the arm and the spring in place. Now remove the three remaining screws that hold the stepper motor and the top plate together. In order to fit the top plate to the new bracket, we need to cut the Bowden tube to the correct length. Fortunately, there is some tolerance in the screw holes in the bracket, so it doesn't need to be that precise. If you want to remove the tube to cut it, the Thingiverse page says 35 millimeters is a good length. I decided to cut the tube in place to save some time. I measured that the tube should be cut to be flush with the top of the protruding part on the right. Next, we can put the extruder top plate back on. Start by putting in the motor screw near the spring retention screw. Then screw in the retention screw all the way. Now move the top plate into place and insert the tube into the coupling. Screw in the already inserted motor screw. Screw in two of the other motor screws, leaving the extruder arm for last. Put in the insert and the spring.
Now screw in the extruder arm screw. You'll need to apply some pressure on the spring to get it to fit. We should make sure the arm moves freely here. Reattach the belt ends to the carriage. We can make the wiring a bit more secure here by using these handy cable tie points in the mount. Now we can put the x-axis assembly back into place, carefully sliding it in from the top. Put the top beam back on the printer and make sure it's tightened well. This is a good time to flip your spool holder to the front if you're using the stock one. Lastly, we're going to reconnect the cables to the x-axis motor and end stop, as well as the extruder motor. The wiring will last longer if we use some zip types to hold it all together. Now that we have our direct drive upgraded printer assembled, we need to make sure it works as expected. Let's print another Benchy so we can compare if there's any difference in the printing quality. I created the G-code for both prints using the same settings, except for the retraction distance. The original profile had 5 mm, but I lowered that to 2 mm for the direct drive print. So let's take a look at the prints. On the left, we have the original setup with the Bowden tube. On the right is the print done with the direct drive upgrade. We can see that the quality is quite similar in some aspects, but the surface smoothness is definitely lower with the upgrade. This might be unnoticeable in some prints, but will definitely be visible in others. On the other hand, there is less stringing in the direct drive print, but those are quite easy to get rid of by hand. I think I will need to do more testing and tweaking to get the full picture though. So, is the upgrade worth it? With the amount of tweaking that I did, the printing quality that I'm seeing isn't really worth it. This might change once I have more time to adjust the settings or maybe upgrade the stepper motor drivers. But as it is now, the ability to print flexible filaments and some other minor benefits isn't really worth the trade-off of the printing quality that I'm seeing. After seeing some other videos about this upgrade, I was really excited to actually do it, but the results aren't really matching what I saw in those videos. The difference may be due to the filament, the mount, tube, slicer settings, a lot of different things. Maybe I pulled out the tube a bit when I was cutting it and that's causing the issues. We'll have to investigate it a bit later. If I can adjust the printer to get the quality back, there is still another question that should be asked. Is it worth it to print the mount yourself and fiddle with the wiring when there are kits available for this exact purpose for 40 or 50 dollars? Such as the 3D printer mods modular direct drive kit which includes all the parts and wiring you will need. This really comes down to what you want out of this upgrade. Do you want to spend more time on your hobby and maybe learn how to solder? Or do you just want to install the upgrade at the least amount of hassle possible? For me, working on these upgrades is a reward in itself, but that won't be the case for some people. Then again, any pre-made kit for this purpose won't be without its issues. I would expect for them to also have some issues with getting the printer adjusted correctly. I will be following up on this upgrade by tuning the printer and also make other videos about improving the Ender 3. So stay tuned. I hope you learned something today. Please ask any questions you may have in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching Hard Frame Soft. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.